I'm Gary from Piaget Planets in York Springs, Pennsylvania. We also have a store in Maryland called All Good Garden Supply. If you're anywhere near us, come check us out. Um, we also got a website and Facebook and social media and all that stuff. Follow us on Instagram, all that. Today we are going to be building a four plant recirculating deep water culture system. And it should be arriving any moment now. And we're going to show you how to put it together. So there's my delivery guy. Delivery. Thanks. Thank you for your gentle delivery. <laughs> Um, we sell this on the website, so um, if you haven't watched our other videos, we did a two-plant version of this, and that was so popular that people kept calling me, so we got a website going and everything, and this is the four-plant version. You can totally go buy all these parts yourself if you want, offline, we don't care. It's nothing, uh, we're just trying to help you out pretty much. So, we're going to go over everything we need for this. It's pretty much going to have four plants and one reservoir, so we're going to need five buckets. And the kit we sell comes with everything. So, we have an undrilled kit and a drilled kit. So, it's your choice. You can drill it yourself, you can save some money, you can have some fun doing it. And kind of customize it a little bit. Um, got one blank lid. This is going to be the reservoir cover to keep the light out of the reservoir. In our other video for this, we went into great detail about all these parts. So look into that. Um, there's a link up here if you want to go check that video out. That's the two plant version. But we talk about all the different parts and the plastics and why things are a good choice and not a good choice. We're going to have a six inch bucket lids on this one, net baskets. Ten, uh, four 10 foot pieces of quarter inch tubing for the air. These are our bulkhead fittings. We're going to be using one inch on this job. And let's see, water level indicator line. This is a little contraption to get the circulation pump going the right way. Got your air stones. We're going to have one in each bucket. We're not going to put an air stone in the reservoir so that our pump doesn't suck in bubbles. Um, we're using a 75 gallon per hour pump. This is the Eco 66 by Hawthorne Gardening. Um, I try to use bigger ones on this. We'll go over that once I get it built. I'm, I'm going to kind of touch base on a lot of that. Pour out air pump. This is kind of one of the quieter ones, but it still kicks enough bubbles for this guy. Um, we do sell heavier duty ones if you want, really want to get stuff bubbling. And then you got your buckets. So when you get our kit, it comes with 14 inch pieces of tubing. So pretty much your buckets can be spaced out about this far. So plant to plant, you're about two feet in between plants. So you can go and you cut this down to whatever you need to fit this system into. So that's all the parts for this, and we do have them listed below on, our, on the YouTube channel, so if you want to go look up all the parts and build it yourself, that's totally cool, go for it. Alright, you're going to need a drill. The bulkheads use a one quarter inch hole saw, and you're going to need a quarter inch drill bit for your air line. That'll be drilled, you know, for your air. Um, this is a deburring tool, which I'll show you how to use that in a little bit. And then a silver sharpie marker or any kind of marker that's going to show up on the black buckets. And I got to go run and get grab my tape measure, so I'll be right back. I got my tape measure, and so what we're going to do first is drill the holes that connect all the buckets together. That's going to be the first thing we do. Um, I just I end up turning them upside down, and I kind of like to keep my labels on one side of the system so it doesn't look all funky, but that's just me. Whatever you guys do, what you want. I like to put my handles out the sides of this because later on when you go to try to move the whole system together you can grab it a little bit easier than doing that and sometimes even like this. So pretty 
pretty much what we're going to do now is lay out the holes for this. going to be the reservoir bucket. Now in the reservoir bucket you're going to have your water level indicator kit on the side of here. So you don't want to have that hitting where the handle is. So that bucket is going to be just sitting with the handle towards the back side here. That way it gives me the whole front to put the water level indicator. Um, another thing you want to make sure you don't do is try not to drill through the stickers on the corners or anything like that on the stickers. So back one because I've seen the stickers sort of the seal off just a hair. I'm gonna have to peel these off when I go to stick the drains on. So anyway, it's gonna be something like this, just spaced out farther when you're done. So let me show you what's going on here in case you didn't see the other videos. Pretty much in between each bucket you're gonna have a drain coming out and a drain going in, and then a drain here, a drain here, back to your reservoir. So it's going to be circulating like this. So I'm just going to use a straight edge here and kind of mark my buckets. Put a little line on them just so I know where they're going to be hooked together at. That way everything's nice and straight. You can um, set this up multiple ways too. I mean, you can go get your own tubing and set the reservoir like way far away. And that might change the angle of this reservoir in here. So keep that in mind. All right, so that's where all my holes are gonna be drilled. Or at least that's the angle where they're gonna be drilled. Trying to make it so you guys can see everything while I'm doing this. But. All right, so inside the bucket, if you haven't watched other videos, there's a rounded kind of corner, and you need to keep your drains up a little bit away from that rounded corner, or they won't seal right. And I've had people who bought this thing and they drill their as far down as they can, and this thing sets a little bit crooked and it just will not seal. So I've been doing everything one and a half inches down as my center hole here. So, little dot there, we're going to go and just mark everything that way when I get drilling, I can just get it all done. And that's pretty much my bullseye for this. And there's my mark. Using the soft tubing to connect everything, you don't really have to worry about. You don't have to worry about everything being exactly right. So if something's off a quarter inch, it's not really gonna matter. All right, so that's all drilled. And you're gonna take your one quarter inch hole saw. I've had people calling in and complaining that I don't drill backwards. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. I just kind of have this feeling like it's giving me some kind of gas, off gas, because it's kind of burned through. All right. It's got a new hole saw blade, so I just want to make sure it's working right. It's perfect. So I'm going to drill all the buckets, just like that. Now I'm going to go use my deburring tool here. You pretty much you need to make these edges really rounded off nice and any little different burr sticking up like that is going to break the seal on your grommets on these. So this thing will help you smooth them out. I've heard somebody said they could use a 
potato peeler for this. I've never tried that. I've also had people say, just razor blades, I've done that myself. Just be careful when, when you do it. But that should be nice and smooth, very important. If that has any little edges on it, it's gonna break the seal. deburring tool we're going to be selling these on our website probably by the time this video gets on there so look for that they sell them at Lowe's, Home Depot, a couple other places Ace Hardware I think it has them but some of you guys are in other countries so hey that's all good try to find what you can That's all drilled up. I'm gonna go clean this mess up real quick and I'll be right back. All right, got everything cleaned up. I'm gonna put them on my bulkheads. I've uh, had a lot of people calling. They wanna try to build this with half inch bulkheads and pretty much half inch does not let a lot of water through. So you're gonna have serious problems trying to pump anything around it. I tried bigger pumps than the 75 gallon per hour and still had problems with not enough air water flow. So that is the problem with recirculating deep water culture in general is your roots. That is always your enemy. Um, I've had people trim roots to try to keep them from clogging up the lines. Um, then of course you can use two inch or three inch PVC. Then you, you know, with the three inch PVC, I have seen pro uh, professional grow places clog that up too, but yeah, it's always about the roots. So we're going with the one inch. All right, these come with two washers on them. So one's gonna go on the inside of the bucket and the other one's gonna go on the outside of the bucket. So we're going from the inside. Well, make sure the inside is nice and clear too. Make sure you don't have any like little shards in there. And then when you put them on, just hand tighten them, get snug them up, but don't go over crazy with it because what's gonna happen is the washer is gonna squeeze out the sides. So it's a little snug like that, and then later on when we do our water test, we're going to see if there's any leaks, and then we'll be able to tighten them up a little bit more if we have to. So I'm going to go ahead and put all these on, and you guys can watch me and fast forward. drain fittings in and we're going to position the buckets up and put the hoses on. Um, you'll notice like the reservoir bucket after you measured everything out and marked your, everything is going to be the closest drains. And then it's going to kind of kind of go out like that. So pay attention to which bucket you got going where. Um, your next one, the drains are going to be slightly angled. That's going to be your first bucket closest to the reservoir slightly angled there so that's going to be by the reservoir and then your back ones are going to be the ones that are on like a angle like that and pretty much that's how it's going to be going so got them all positioned um i got my tubing and i'll put my tubing in some hot water here this will help it go on a lot easier. I've had some uh, older folks call me. I mean, this is like way, way easier to bend now. And it's gonna help you put it together. So the fittings we use, these drains are quadruple barbed. So they, uh, the quadruple barb really will keep it from leaking. Once these hoses cool back down, it's gonna tighten right up against it.
but the hot water, I definitely recommend it for anybody who doesn't build stuff a lot because without it, they are really hard to get on. Like I said earlier, you can position this however you want. All right, we throw in, when you order from us, we got 14 inch tubing, so you can fit this over a large area and put some big lights over it if you want. It's just kind of cut down all the phone calls where people, some people want them shorter, some people want them longer. It's just never ending the different ways to build this thing. You can use bins to build this. You can have, if you end up doing eight buckets, I've had people calling about that. And what happens with that is the weight of the water. With eight buckets full of water, there's gonna be a lot more pressure on all the fittings. So you're gonna be more likely to have a leak if, if you go with that many buckets. This is where I was going to do my second table when I was going to build this, but we're going to be all right. So yeah, the hot water definitely makes a huge difference putting this thing together. All right. So when you get everything positioned and everything together, the next step is going to be your air holes. Um, I usually wait till this point to do the air holes just so I can get them where, where I want them. And I usually like to have them on the insides of the system. So my tubing can just kind of be out of the way from the outer walls because you figure you'll be taking, your, taking care of your plants around the outer side edge here. So if the tubing's in towards the middle, that's fine. And for the air, I go right about the top around here. Your water level will never be up that high. So let me show you with a basket in it real quick. Yeah, your water level is still with the little one. You still have that little rim right there to get your, your, get your uh, air tubing through. So this is a quarter inch bit, just standard bit. I'm gonna try to drill this really tight so that the tubing doesn't just have any way to leak at all, ever. Um, it comes with four 10 foot sections of uh, tubing here. We like this green tubing. It's like extra flexible. So that's pretty much what you got going on. Nice tight fit there, and it'll keep it from leaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill the rest of these real quick. Um, I'm not gonna drill the reservoir. Um, I talked about that a little bit before in my other videos. When you have air bubbling in a reservoir with a submersible pump, the pump's gonna suck in bubbles, and it's not gonna you know pump as good. And plus with this, your plant's gonna be in each station. One air saving per bucket is plenty. So. All right, so that's all drilled. <clears throat> Your air stones, we include the medium sized air stones for this. You can do whatever you want with the air stones. As many as you want. You can go crazy with it if you want. Generally, in hydro, the more air, the better. But there is a point where the water cannot absorb any more oxygen. So we'll leave that up to you guys. But, and we've talked about this a lot in our other videos matching up air stones with air pumps. So go back and watch them. I'm not going to go over everything over again. But. So pretty much the stone, try to get in the middle of the bucket if you can. Um, let's see if I can show you guys a little bit better here. Small air stones can restrict pumps. So these are the medium sized Hydro Farm active aquas. Put that right in the middle. There's air rings, there's air discs. You can do anything you want with that. These are just an easy, quick throwaway stone, so. The 10 foot airline that we include will allow you to keep your air pump away from the garden 
which is a good thing. If the pump's sitting somewhere that's in a cool area, it's going to help keep temperatures down in here. If you have your pump sitting right underneath your light in your air room, which might be a little bit heated up, you're going to be sucking in hot air to begin with, plus the light's going to be cooking your pump. So try not to do that. changing out the system I always leave the air running because <clears throat> if this is in water and you turn the air pump off everything in your reservoir in your buckets are just gonna go whoosh, into the air soon so I try to try to leave it running while I'm changing stuff out it's not gonna hurt anything to have it running All right. so pretty much that's it for that bucket part of it the next thing we're gonna be doing is the reservoir itself get that set up the right way. I guess I will go touch on the air real quick. Um, air pumps, if you haven't messed with these things, this has dedicated four outputs, one for each bucket. If you have a two output pump to try to split them, things tend to like end up going to whichever has the least resistance. So. It's good to just have dedicated outputs on your pumps, unless you move up to the big metal pumps. Then it's got so much air coming out that it'll just, everything will be bubbling. So um, your air pump, you should always have above the water level. So you can get it outside of your tent and try to keep it above the water level. I've had this happen to customers the, the power cuts off and if your pump is sitting down on the side here it, there's a siphon effect and it'll suck water right in there and kill it um, when the bottom of your pump is where the air goes in at so I know these can be kind of loud so I wanted to like lay blankets on here and set it on top well if you're gonna cover up this part you're not gonna get the air into the pump so on um, this disc right here can pop off and underneath here is a little piece of felt and you want to go periodically clean that. So if your pump seems like it's not putting out as much air as it used to, check that because that could be the problem. And of course, you know, all your lines hook up to the pump and all that. So I'm not going to do all that right a second. I'm going to move on to the reservoir here so that this video isn't like two hours long. All right, so. Reservoir is going to be down here. It's going to have the water level indicator kit on it. So I'm going to go ahead and drill for that first. Same drill bit, it's just we're going to be using a half inch drain fitting for that instead of a one inch. And we have a, actually, we have a whole video about the water level, the water level indicator kit. So. If you're popping around on our YouTube channel, check that out. We also have our videos on our website too. So if you want to go on there, I kind of like the YouTube better because it has it has um descriptions underneath the videos that have all the parts listed and all the tools and all that stuff. So check that out. All right. So what we're gonna be doing is a water level indicator. Pretty much this tube's on the side of the bucket. You'll be able to always see where your water level is through this blue tube. Um, <clears throat> it's a blue tube. The blue blocks the spectrum of the light that grows algae, so that's why it's blue. And this is made up of a few different pieces here. Got your half inch strain. You get one, one foot piece of blue tubing and then a little connector piece to hook your elbow up. Um, I like doing it this way, and I'll show you why once I get it on there, but I, I sell a piece that actually has the elbow built in, but some people like to drain, use this as a drain, and when you have the elbow built in, you can't, you can't bend this over to drain it out, so, <clears throat> um, should be about one and a half, one and a half inches up, just like the other drains, 
just so we don't hit that bottom curve of the buckets. So I don't know if you can get over here. So one and a half. Deburr that one as well. Always go deburr all the holes they drill. Except for the air holes. You don't need to do it on those. Right. You also sell a reservoir top off kit, which is pretty cool. You can add, a, add an extra reservoir outside that'll keep all the water levels topped off at the same time. So if you check that video, which is probably going to be right about here, a little link to it or something in the description, that can come in handy, especially if we're going on vacation and stuff. in the hot water but the hot water helps with this too I think it'd be quite hard to get on all right now for the top of this we have a little clip this little thing right here it's a special little clip they're hard to find and that uses a quarter inch hole We do sell just this kit too. It's free shipping on our website. So and if you order two of them, you get a discount or three or four or 10 or 100. So. When I go to drill this, I'm, I'm aiming for this little lip right here. You don't want to drill through the actual bucket. We're just going to go through the lip. So don't drill like extra harbors and go through the bucket. <laughs> just like that. And this thing's gonna just kind of click right on there. Ta-da, it's on there, so. All right. So that should do it. All right, one more thing for the actual drilling is gonna be a notch out for your lid. Um, because what you're going to do is you're going to have you're going to have a submersible pump in here that which does all the circulation, and obviously there's going to be a power cord coming out of there. So, so the notch out for here, I've done this a few different ways. You can do whatever you want with it. Try not to make it too big of a notch out because if you get light through the lid into your reservoir, then you could have some algae growing. Algae doesn't kill anything, but it depletes the oxygen levels and it eats nutrients. So, so with this, I usually just try to get on the rim of a table and very carefully. A little notch out. Now I'll give you enough room to get your tubing out and all that. Just enough room for the cord. All right, the submersible pump. This is what's going to circulate everything. 75 gallons per hour. I tried to do a 250, too much. With the 250, pretty much it, it would pump around to the first bucket. That would be really high up. Then the next bucket would be a little bit lower, a little bit lower. When it got down here, this bucket would be real low. Then, of course, the reservoir real low. So with the 75 gallon per hour, it's just enough to keep everything stirring up, but without having your level, water levels way off. Um, I've had people talking about, well, can you raise a bucket up to get the water level even? It doesn't work like that because all your water wants to be the same level through the whole system. And it just, it's just not gonna work like that. All right. So this little pump here, 
This is your half inch fitting for it. Hopefully you can see inside of here. Make sure you clean all the stuff out too before you actually get it filled up. All right, I don't know how well you can get in here, but pretty much this is gonna go in here. This is pretty much, this only comes in a half an inch. This piece here fits into this back side of the bulkheads perfectly. This is three quarter inch tubing. And then in between here is a half inch to three quarter inch reducer. Um, Hydro stores can buy these, they come in 10 in a pack. And I'm gonna put that on there. And then I'm gonna position this right into the back side of the fitting. And then the pump, if you can see that, it just wedges right on the wall and it's not gonna go anywhere, it's in there. So that's how it's gonna circulate. You can, um, if you're gonna change out stuff, you can also take the pump off and circulate it the other direction. That's gonna help prolong how long you can circulate it before the roots start to clog things up. And like I talked about earlier, the roots are always the problem in recirculating deep water culture systems. So right now the water is going to be going clockwise. You send the other way, it's going counterclockwise. Just buys you some time. Another thing I've had customers do is cycle this pump. You can do like one minute on, five minutes off, something like that. And that's going to keep the roots from wanting to go around the tubing. Um, we also now include a five foot piece of half inch tubing. This can come in handy for when you drain out the system. You can take your pump out and then hook it to this, turn it on, and then you can suck out the water into a five gallon buckets or into a bin or into a drain or whatever you got. And that comes with the system now. So check that out. And next we're gonna be filling this up with water and doing the leak test and all that. So we'll be right back. All right, we're doing the leak test now. Um, now's a good time to go clean out all your buckets to make sure you don't have any stuff left in them. So I just kind of go around with a little damp paper towel here. Paper towels work good. See all that crap that came out. So that's what you want to get out. That's going to get in your pump and clog it up. So get all your buckets cleaned up like that. And then it's time to throw some water in here. All right, um, for the leak test, I like to just put a little piece of paper towels around each drain. Because sometimes, especially when you're in a grow tent, the grow tents are silver and they just, it's hard to see if you have a leak. You might come in the next day and be like, oh shit, I got a bunch of water here. So this will answer the question real quick. Um, you can even be conservative and cut your paper towels in half, whatever. This will just show up a lot easier when you're And I went, like I said before, I went and just hand tighten these and see what happens. So, all right, so. Go throw one bucket in here, see what happens. Um, when you fill this up, and this goes for your whole row, you don't have to deal with the other four buckets. This bucket will disperse everything out. So, and I'm not filling it all the way up either. I'm just going to do it's about eight gallons and run through it, just enough to get, just enough to make sure we're good. Then you can go add some more in. Um, so yeah, so far I see nothing coming out of anything. Um, so let me go ahead and second bucket. And putting that much water in, you got some weight of the water going on now, so there's going to be a leak. It'll already be leaking. Um, I know people have called me building this thing and they've had leaks. It's like a lot of it has to do with the drains not be, being too close to the bottom. I um, mean, you need to have them up. 
and yeah. All right, so leaf test is done. Everything's good here. Well, now's the time where you get your air in there, get that going, get your lids going here. Make sure you clean all of your little clay rocks when you get them. The dust on them can make a big, big old mess in your buckets. And also make sure to follow us. Um, we're on Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Um, if you got any questions about the system, uh, we'd really like you to put them in the comments below for this video because that way other people can read what you're asking and they'll learn from that instead of having a million people try to call me. And we're going to be doing more videos, of course, so make sure you click down and subscribe and check out our other videos while you're at it. And I thank you for watching. And I'm Gary from Piaz Plants, your strength in Spania. We also have a store in Maryland called All Good Garden Supply. If you're anywhere near the area, we carry all the parts to build this. And also check out our website because we have this for sale on there if you want to buy it from us. It's all good. <laughs> have a good one.